Well, we are continuing to look at these snapshot stories from main characters in the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament. And if you recall from last week, it was a challenging story to read of David and Bathsheba. The story went on that the child that, that Bathsheba conceived ended up dying. But in the process, David's heart has, has changed. You know, we read Psalm 51 that, that he penned right after uh, the, the prophet Nathan kind of called him out about what he did. David's heart had changed. It was not only, life wasn't only about him anymore. So the story went on then. David consoled Bathsheba, took her into his house, and she became his wife. And then she bore another son, and they named this son Solomon. Solomon would go on to enlarge the kingdom of Israel to its largest borders and build the temple of God that his father David had envisioned. But very early on in his tenure as king, when Solomon's future was yet undetermined, we come to this story that we will read from the book of 1 Kings chapter 3. If you'd like to read along, you can find it on page 306 of the front section of your Red Pew Bible. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For that was the principal high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart. Towards you, And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this great people of yours? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked for this. God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before, and no one like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor all your life. No other king shall compare with you. If you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your life. Then Solomon awoke. It had been a dream. He came to Jerusalem where he stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. He offered up burnt offerings and offerings of well-being and provided a feast for all of his servants. Good and gracious God, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts that are open to receive and respond to your word, your message to us this day. Amen. How many of you remember the 1992 animated Disney movie with Robin Williams, who played a large blue genie? What was the name of it? Aladdin, right? Yes. Hopefully you have all seen this movie, Aladdin. Well, let me ask, if you were given three wishes, what would they be? You don't have to say them now, but three wishes, right? Wouldn't that be nice? What if you only had one wish? 
If you were only granted one wish, what would you wish for? What would be that one thing so important to you on your mind, on your heart? That's what you would ask for if you were given a wish. Or if, like the story we read, God appeared to you in a dream and said, Ask. Ask and I will give. What do you long for? A husband and wife in their 60s were coming up on their 40th wedding anniversary. Knowing his wife loved antiques, he bought a beautiful old brass oil lamp for her. When she unwrapped it, a genie appeared. He thanked them and gave each of them one wish. The wife wished for an all-expense-paid, first-class, around-the-world cruise with her husband. Shazam! Instantly, she was presented with tickets for the entire journey, plus expensive side trips, dinners, shopping, you name it. The husband, however, wished he had a female companion who was 30 years younger. (laughs) Shazam! Instantly, he turned 93 years old. (laughs) Throughout history, There have been many, many wise women and wise men who have made sound and wise decisions to lead people, to govern societies, and there have been those who have not. And we've seen the difference. We know the difference. There have been women and men who have passed on some very wise sayings, or also known as proverbs, throughout the generations. One like this, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, right? There's some truth in that. There is some insight. There is some wisdom to that. We pass it on from generation to generation. Here's another one. Two wrongs don't make a right. The pen is mightier than the sword, right? Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to quiz you on some of these. So I'm going to say the first part of it, and I want to hear you respond to see if you know these phrases, These proverbs that have been passed down from generations that do contain insight and truth, elements of truth and and wisdom. When the going gets tough, people who live in glass houses, birds of a feather, how about this? Keep your friends close and your, those are good, the early bird, God helps those who? Beggars can't be? This one I tell my boys all the time. Actions speak? You guys are really good. We'll do a few more because I'm having fun with this. Beauty is in the? All right, this one might be be tough. I'm just going to say one word. The first word. Necessity. Wow, very sharp, very sharp congregation here. A penny saved is? You can't judge a book. Good things come. The grass is always greener. No, in Vermont. Got that. All right, here's one that's really, this one's great. Oscar Wilde said this, always borrow money from a pessimist. He won't expect it back. Pretty good. And one that's a little more also true, but that's really meaningful from Benjamin Franklin. It's another kind of pithy saying, a proverb. Instead of cursing the darkness, light a candle. Right? Benjamin Franklin also said, the doors of wisdom are never shut. And that's what Solomon prayed for. From a young age... He prayed that the doors of wisdom would be open to him, that he would lead and guide and govern the people with wisdom. This was his one wish. I'm not sure it would have been ours when I initially asked that question, but it was his. And that's what he asked for. And we saw God's response. Now, later on in the chapter, we read this. God gave Solomon very great wisdom and discernment and breadth of understanding as vast as the sand on the seashore, so that Solomon's wisdom surpassed the wisdom of all the people of the east and all the wisdom of Egypt. 
His fame spread throughout all the surrounding nations. He composed 3,000 proverbs, and his songs numbered 1,005. He would speak of trees, from the cedar that is in Lebanon to the hyssop that grows in the wall. He would speak of animals and birds and reptiles and fish. People came from all of the nations to hear the wisdom of Solomon, from all the kings of the earth, who had heard of his wisdom. That's what he asked for, for insight, for understanding, for wisdom. And God provided that for him, gave him great intelligence, and he was able to lead and govern with really wonderful insights that helped the people. I mentioned that he composed 3,000 proverbs. The majority of the proverbs that are in our Bible or were composed by Solomon. Those are Solomon's proverbs, lessons that he learned in life. One of the proverbs that Carrie read earlier says, Proverb of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. And when you attain wisdom, then... You will understand righteousness and justice and equity, every good path. For wisdom will come into your heart, and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. That's what we need in our lives. We need a a bit more wisdom to know good from evil, to see injustice and to strive for equity. When I served at Round Hill Community Church in Connecticut, one of the great privileges that I had each summer was to travel to the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe Reservation in LaPlante, South Dakota. And while we spent time there listening to the stories of the Native Americans, these incredible indigenous people, the life lessons that they learned, often through tragedies, that they carried on from generation to generation. One of the Lakota leaders, uh, is a man named Joseph M. Marshall III. He's a Lakota Indian, was raised in South Dakota by his maternal grandparents. He is now a historian, an author, and a Lakota craftsman. He wrote a great book called The Lakota Way, Stories and Lessons for Living, Native American Wisdom on Ethics and Character. And in this book, Joseph says these words, Wisdom is the antidote for impatience selfishness, anger, ignorance, arrogance, and a host of other tendency that invariably place us in harm's way, sets us up for embarrassment, or causes us to hurt others. Wisdom can prevent us from making fools of ourselves and enable us to live, to leave a lasting positive impact. Wisdom is the sum of the experiences, the highs and the lows, the good and the bad, the successes and the failures that are a part of our life's journey. Wisdom comes from the light as well as from the darkness. It gives us depth of insight, the perception that only comes from experiencing our numerous struggles. And then he says these words, Wisdom is life's gift to us, but it is also our gift to life. We seem to live in an age that does not prioritize wisdom. There are other countries in our world that prize those who have gray and white hair because of their wisdom. They are elevated and celebrated as they should be. We tend to look at TikTok celebrities as the most influential. I mean, there's there's a whole group of people called influencers, and they're like my son's age, right? I mean, there's something to think about that. Because we live in a society that prioritizes and prizes outward appearance and youth and, and, and outward signs of success. But see, Solomon, he got all of that. He accumulated all the wealth, all the fame, all the power, the reputation, everything. 
And later on in his life, later on when he looked back, he wrote one of these Proverbs in Proverbs 3. He said, wisdom is worth more than silver. It brings more profit than gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you could want is equal to it. Think about that. He prayed for it. He experienced both. He had wisdom and had everything else. And looking back said, at the end of the day, this is what you want. Wisdom. Because wisdom teaches us. Wisdom changes us. Wisdom is a gift to us and it's our gift to other people as well. Chasing after all those other things, things which are fleeting and fragile, never really brings transformation. See, wisdom leads us to act with more kindness, humility, courage, perseverance, and patience. It is the antidote to anger and ignorance and arrogance. Wisdom leads us to know when we should speak and when we should remain silent. When we should hit send on that email and when we should just keep it in draft. Wisdom leads to transformation. And the good news is, it doesn't have to come from us. It's a gift from God. God gives wisdom to all who ask. God's Spirit illuminates us, as we sang in that hymn, to open our eyes and open our ears and open our mouths to speak what is right, what is true, what is just, what is helpful, not what is harmful and hurtful. We all need more wisdom. I need more wisdom to parent better, to be a better spouse. I need the gift of God's wisdom as a young pastor to lead and to guide. But I believe we all need wisdom no matter what stage of life we are in. That is what we should be asking for. That is what we can be praying for each and every day. And certainly when a situation arises and you don't know what to do, which way to go, ask God for wisdom. I want to share with you a brief letter I received from our compassion child. So the Haug family has been sponsoring children through Compassion International uh, for, well, Loretta and I, for 18 years or so. And Compassion International is one of our missions partners. And hopefully, later on in the calendar year, we'll have a representative from Compassion to come and share about this great work. It's an amazing child sponsorship program that focuses on health, on well-being, on education, uh, and on faith. We just last week, uh, we had a, a... compassion child who aged out of the program they call a project and we received a a new child named Fisto he's aged five from Rwanda just last week we received this letter that he wrote and it's translated so we can read it and he said dear Daniel and Loretta your sponsored child Fisto is greeting you in the name of Jesus him and his family are doing good It is going on well at school and got good marks equal to 98% marks. This is a literal translation. He was the second in class. It's too sunny here in Rwanda. How is it there? He thanks you for the good letter you sent to him. It is good to know that you have twins. I learned the most about God from the Compassion Project. Yes, in, and he answered some of our questions. Yes, in my project, I'm learning about the Bible. My favorite Bible story is about a lost child. My favorite Bible verse is Job 28, 28. My favorite thing I learned about Jesus is that he healed the sick. My favorite song to sing at the project is a hymn, song number 100. And then he said these words. When I pray to Jesus, I pray about having wisdom. This kid whose family cannot afford food or clothes or an education or books, when he prays to Jesus, 
He prays for wisdom. And I think of all the silly things I ask for or wish. And here is this young five-year-old, soon-to-be six-year-old boy praying for wisdom because he knows what Solomon knew. Wisdom means everything. Wisdom will stay with him his whole life. Wisdom will stay with him to lead him and guide him and protect him and bless him and his family. Wisdom can lead to trans- transformation and change in his heart, with his family, hopefully in his community, and well beyond. We're going to continue to support him to make sure he has all of his basic needs, but I'm praying for wisdom, and I can't wait to see what kind of remarkable young man he's going to turn into. If Fisto can be praying for wisdom... In his situation, how much more should we be longing for wisdom and to become people of wisdom that others can turn to, to seek guidance and help and support in times of need? But friends, the good news that we celebrate, that we read from the very beginning, that Solomon penned after a lifetime of experience, is that wisdom is a gift from God. Available to all who seek it. All we have to do is ask. Thanks be to God.